think uh, Thursday, Friday, something like that. And uh, so that's supposed to be the first one where you have Unity in a more stable state. Uh, I heard uh, some issues that people had about, you know, they, they it depends on who you ask, but some people were completely renting about the stability of Unity, and some people were complaining about it not having enough features, so they couldn't do certain things they were used to doing. Um, I personally spoke to a friend of mine, a person who works for me, uh, who uh, who was trying to use Unity, and he's, he's pretty new to Linux, and he quite liked the interface. Uh, and that, that kind of showed, you know, perhaps they do the right thing by trying to emulate uh, a simpler interface, a bit of a phone interface type thing. Um, and I know uh, Tim's wife has had some experiences with, maybe you can remind me. No, I mean, she's been, she's been very happy uh, with Unity, and uh, there's been no issues. I, I can't even suggest that she's doing anything that would be construed as being overly advanced. Uh, it's pretty much the mainstream task that she's doing. She's and, on and that's the general thing I've heard about and, Unity. It's like, as long as you're the most basic, you're fine. If you're trying to do anything more than basic, you're going to hit your head against it's not quite there yet. But then conversely, uh, you've got to look at uh, Chronicle as a company, and they're going to obviously want to make money, and they are a business, they're not a charity. If uh, Ubuntu was run on, on goodwill and intentions alone, then I expect it would be, uh, be doing very well, because uh, Ubuntu's got a very large following, and a lot of people actually rave about it. But it, the hard facts are that Chronicle has to make the profit. And it wants to make a profit, and uh, it should make a profit if it wants to. And they have to appeal, and they have to be, the main direction would have to be to the area where they're going to get the most, the most return. And the most return would be the mainstream user who does only access. Well, and and I have no problem with that as long as the options for the more advanced user are still there right under the hood. You know, okay, the more advanced user needs to flip the bonnet lid up and, you know, get in there, but uh, they're, that's the problem. When you flip the bonnet lid up, there's no engine. <laughs> I often hear this term, advanced user, and I often question what an advanced user actually is. Because I look at a distro, and let's just pick, we'll put Ubuntu to one side for a second, and just pick, just pick any distro, uh, yeah, that's um, Mint, that's probably a good example. And they say it's for beginners, and it's a very good distro for new users to Linux to migrate to. And that's very true, it's all out of the box, you can write tree uh, Drivers are all already there for you just to uh, simply uh, start up. There's no problem at all. But when you hear about advanced users, I would like to know, in terms of the home, and certainly in enterprise, a little bit different. But what exactly is this advanced user doing that they can't do on Mint, uh, which is aimed more for the average to, to the user? Um, yeah, are, are they are they are these advanced users classed as coders? Are they network managers? What 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 are these advanced users? It, I mean, it, it depends what they're doing. I mean, I'll give you an example of like an advanced user task. Um, it, I, I'm a small business owner, but for reasons of a certain piece of software I have or the topology in my office. I have to be able to set this one computer over here that runs this at a static IT. That's a little bit of an advanced user thing, and the average user is never going to do that. But there are times where things like that are called for. Okay, for my workflow, I need to move this from here to there. I, I need to. They're isolated things, and no matter how you get them, you're never yeah, going to get them right. I fully appreciate that. That's that's again, that's for your business. That's. Uh using a machine as a means to make money or to, to run a business. But okay, but we, we live in a world right now, especially in this economy, where more and more people's home and business is overlapping. You know, people working at a home or people trying to run their own business or so on and so forth. So more and more, the home personal computer is having to have the base yes. But we should Enterprise say it's very much in the person's background. And, uh, so, so see, uh, yeah, and I, I mean, the question, I'll, I'll give another example. Okay, tell me if this is an advanced user or or, or not. Okay, you have a bedroom coder who's, uh, who uses C++. He's a demo scene coder, and he can use Unity as his platform to, to launch all his applications and do his other tasks as well. Now, would you regard that as an advanced or, a, uh, or an average user? Because this is where I think the line gets blurred, and people knock Unity and say oh, advanced users can't, you know, won't like it, or it's not for I, advanced I, I, users. I, I would classify that. That's the thing. There's advanced 
okay, there's power user and then there's advanced user. And we should use the term power user as opposed to advanced. A power user who's somebody who's doing more advanced things, but they don't have a high technical, like they're not a coder, they're not a son, they just, they want their computer to behave exactly how they want it to and they don't want to get frustrated with it and they don't have to go, have to run the in run around to get it to do that. That's a power user. An advanced user is they prefer to do it the power user way, but if at the end of the day they have to do it the advanced user way and go jump through hoops, they're okay with that too. And and that's kind of the rub there. I, I do because I mean I sort of I, I jump get my high horse a little bit with certain um, certain blogs and certain sites when they do talk about Unity and uh, Ubuntu in particular because I still think there's a lot of uh, bigotry around Linux and I certainly think there's a lot of um, elitism as well where there's a group of people, however small, that don't like Ubuntu and that type of distribution because it introduces a new user into Linux and they would rather Linux be this unique thing which only special people can be a part of. And I, I certainly think that's a very small minority of people have uh, not done damage. So well, I, 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 big enough I don't particularly like some things about Ubuntu, but it's not for that reason. Mm. I'm all for Linux becoming as user-friendly as it can. I just don't want the user friendly to be at the expense of making life difficult for a power user or advanced user. And then, I mean, there's always been in the Linux world a, a plethora of choice anyway, and uh, whether that's your desktop environment or the or the distribution itself. And I, I think I hope well, no, that's like that, that's the yeah. thing. At the end of the and day, I, I don't have to use Ubuntu yeah. right now if I don't want to. And I hope, <laughs> and I, I, and I hope well, I hope I'm not misquoting Johnny. I'm sure this was said by Johnny. But one time on uh, in the IRC channel for Tech Rights, it was mentioned about there was some criticism level of it's Ubuntu, and he made the the comment back, which was, well, there's always you can choose another distribution, and it's very true. I mean, Ubuntu must be doing something right to have such a name uh, on everybody's lips. So regardless of whether people use it or not, it's one of the main talking points every time there's a release. Some distributions can have three or four releases. Not and anymore. Like not, not to the same extent as before. <clears throat> I was gonna mention. No, uh, re really, the people who talk about Ubuntu re releases now are lugs and Ubuntu users. They're like, wow, it's new Ubuntu. But as a whole, no, it's not really talked about like that anymore. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this release would probably be least covered release ever that I've seen, or, or maybe except the very few first ones. But uh, yeah, there is, is that more? Yeah. But is that more indicative that the message is already out and people no, already are I, aware? No, of it? I think it means lo loads of people who used to care more about distributions just don't seem to have very much passion about well, it. Regardless I, I, if it shows, I mean, regardless if it shows the actual usage figures or not, which I don't believe it does. But if you look at DistroWatch itself, you can see that the page views for Ubuntu are still at the yeah. top. Yes, they're yeah. going up and down and fluctuating, but so are all the other distributions. So regardless of whether people are using it or not, they're still very interested in what's being said about it. I, I do want to know on that, though, how many of those is actual Ubuntu versus Ubuntu-based distros that fixed the things people complain about with stock Ubuntu by creating an Ubuntu spin-off distro? That's a fair comment. Yeah, if you look back at the historical data, it's just pretty simple to do if you're using uh, distro. Actually, it's, it's very funny the way they do it. Is it reloads the entire page every time you change the uh, the time spans on the on the rankings. But Ubuntu used to be way, way ahead of the uh, of the other distros. And now, if you actually look at the, the ones that compete against Ubuntu are basically derivatives of Ubuntu. Uh, mostly the ones that do what you could do with Ubuntu, and just basically install GNOME 3.2 uh, in the next release of Ubuntu. Or you could just take Ubuntu and use KDE uh, is it, yeah, it's KD 4.7, I believe. Uh, so Harold Cedar was talking about uh, them trying to use the very latest KDE while they were still doing the alpha or the beta version of the distro. So, I mean, you, you, you shouldn't say Ubuntu doesn't have the option for advanced users. It just doesn't have it by default. Uh, it's still there. Well, no, it's, uh, the, the, that, that's, my bi that's one of my big complaints about Ubuntu. Ubuntu can be a great OS if you're not a Linux version and you know, oh, I need to add this, I need to add that, I need to tweak this, I need to do that. Somebody sitting down in front of Linux for the first time isn't going to know any of that, and that's my real gripe with Ubuntu, that it is so front and center and it's preaching itself like it has it all there, because it, it doesn't. There's, there's 
some things that aren't quite well, not right. Well, the wallpapers. Did you see the new wallpapers? I mean, that, that's what it mostly makes headlines for. I mean, it's just that's not a very good sign when people just look at the wallpapers now. But honestly, I mean, I look at the news and I look at its statistics.